Hi everybody, just wanted to do a quick video on a very interesting story regarding a bank robbery committed by this lady who is known as Pamela Gondwe. Now apparently she has worked for Barclays Bank in Zambia and she committed a crime where she stole 400,000 US dollars and the article is quite interesting and the headline and the story behind this whole robbery now I am not one for supporting crime whatsoever but it's just an interesting story that someone um, who's accused allegedly of committing a crime or stealing money from a bank. I just wanted to sort of sh show some articles where she's actually made a statement to say that she's not the only one involved in the crime. And this article headline says, unfair to label Pamela as a criminal when large companies do the same. And banking could be seen, could be seen, allegedly, as a, as an industry that takes people's money and charges them for banking their money without giving them a fair interest rate on the returns of the bank or banks or the banking industry investing their own money. So there's different opinions, mindsets, conclusions that can be drawn from the whole banking and investing industry it's not the point is it's not clean you know it's not something that's fair i don't think anyone can turn around and say that the banking industry is fair i mean look at ppi and look at the different payments and and accusations that banks have had to face even investing you know with the Madoff case even though Madoff has gone to jail and I'm sure at some point if they catch Pamela Gondway she will be heading for jail or she may be not guilty it says here I for one do not support stealing, but in the manner it will be very unfair to labour Pamela Gondwe as a criminal in the sense that there are so many factors one may consider. As at now there are so many multinational companies stealing from people in poor countries in broad daylight and in most cases the law is bent to justify the messiah as Barclays Bank is the light being the culprit among many banks we have in Zambia and if you look even at America and surrounding presidents and surrounding loans to presidents and I notice I'm using the word plural presidents so I'm not naming any particular president but if you look at banks and how they've scrupulous you know they've been scrupulous in their uh, dealings and activities and when banks even go bust and broke they have government bailouts you know so th this 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 can be without condoning any particular crime or crime at all it's just interesting that banking is you know can be perceived as something lawful or something clean and goody goody two shoes when really 
There's lots of other cases that shine the light that banking is not as goody-goody two-shoes or clean or even lawful. Now, let's move on to the next article. It says here that dated the 4th of July, which is today, um, it says Zambian authorities fume at mobile phone service providers for aiding wanted bank fraudster to escape. And they have a photo of, of her again here, Pamela Gondway. And it says here in the article that Zambian security wings are up in arms against mobile phone service providers Airtel and MTN for refusing to grant them authority to trail fugitive bank robber Pamela Gunway's phone calls a few hours before she fled the country. So, here in this article, you've got Airtel of Zambia and MTN refusing to grant them authority to trail fugitive bank robber Pamela Gunway's phone calls. Now, I found this pretty interesting and, and, and funny as well because. Um, how could this ever be? Um, this is amazing, amazing. Um, and I'm, that's all I'm going to say on this. It's quite, quite amazing that mobile phone service providers, Airtel and MTN, would refuse to grant authority to trail fugitive bank robber Pamela Gunway's phone calls. And it says here in the second paragraph, immediately when the robbery was reported, the Police Anti-Corruption Commission, ACC, and the Drug Enforcement Commission, DEC, contacted the two mobile phone providers to provide call trails and track the communication pattern for Pamela, but they declined, despite there being a search warrant. So even with a search warrant, Airtel and M MTN said no. That to me is amazing. Amazing. And it says here the security wings immediately, immediately got hold of the phone numbers that Pamela was using, and there were MTN and Airtel. Urgent contacts were made to senior executives of Airtel and MTN, including the managing directors, but they did not cooperate. Managing directors, but they did not cooperate. The latest investigation has now revealed that Pamela only carried very little money, but, you know, that's, again, I feel speculation. Now, on my third article and last article, if you look at, this was dated the 3rd of July, 2019. Barclays Bank staff in Zambia placed an Interpol watch list over alleged 400k theft. Here's another photo of Pamela Gondway. And the article reads and says, Pamela Gondway has been placed on red alert list of most wanted criminals by Interpol, Lusaka Times, is reporting and it says Pamela was an employee of Barclays Bank accused of stealing 400,000 cash belonging to the bank and is believed to have fled Zambia last month now in some articles they say that what she did was she got an employee to go to lunch by offering to pay for the lunch and that probably I think in some way sort of took her to the restaurant make sure that she got the food she was eating the food then she walked back to the vault and apparently got into the vault filled the bags and and left the bank by the back door but quite interesting is a statement if you just scroll down it says here in the statement to zambian watch pamela said she didn't rub the bank alone adding that she couldn't disclose her location. Zambian watching the, in her statement says she said, this is her statement, allegedly, 
Zambian watch in line with your request I am so sorry but I cannot disclose my location right now until the dust settles <laughs> the dust settles okay you might wish to know that I am not denying not denying the allegations but what I can tell you is that the money that was gotten from Barclays Bank Long Acres Branch is 300,000 US dollars my supervisors know this now that's pretty interesting I am I have been following media reports the truth of the matter is that I'm not alone I cannot get that lot of money alone in fact there are three keys to the vault the first key is kept by a different person the second key two and then my key i used to keep so people must really ask themselves a question how did i get access to the other two keys the truth will come out later but for now i'm not willing to come back home i will be here maybe unless i die people at the bank want to take advantage of the situation Branch managers know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not going to go into the rest of it, but let me just quickly see. Miss Gondway says it is unfair for people to target her only as a thief riding on the name of her uncle who used to be Bank of Zambia governor. So her she's got political connections because... Her uncle used to be Bank of Zambia governor, which now she has famously been involved, allegedly, in robbing Barclays Bank. He says, people are tr just trying to use my uncle's name so that they can destroy it. People in this matrix are a lot. But because of Mr. Gondway, who happened to be my uncle, people are trying to dent the name. I can wish all my friends well in the, this episode, but I'm afraid I won't step a foot in the country alive. What do you think about Pamela Gondway's um, situation? Please leave a, any comments if you're on YouTube or Twitter. Um, like, share, support, subscribe. Thank you for listening.